Regular season high school soccer wrapping up this week, but still plenty to talk about. Sidekicks isn't going away anytime soon as we are joined by the executive director of Pace Center, Danny Fisher, alongside Chris Black, sporting an officiating t-shirt. We'll get into that in just a <laughs> moment. But, but gentlemen, it's the last week of the regular season. Not a whole lot of drama left. Pretty much all the league races have been decided, with one exception. Yeah, the uh, St. Ursula NDA on uh, Saturday should be uh, a good game. Always a... Um, Always a competitive game, always a good feel with the two schools going at it and the players really sort of, you know, they know each other, the players. It's a great battle and you've been, you've been a part of it, Chris, as well. So, um, and it'll be a good game getting ready for the playoffs next week as well. Yeah, because really the big thing is going to come down to is it seems like St. Ursula or Notre Dame are always either trying to win the track on this last day or ruin the chances for the other team. So if you can't get up for ruining your rival's chances to win a league title, I don't know what you can get up for. So that would be exciting. You know, seedings are done. You know where you're going to be. But, you know, you want to fight for the bragging rights as well as, uh, you know, end up with the, 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 track, the track victory, which, you know, those teams are always fighting for. Yeah, St. John's won the boys' track title. Anthony Wayne sweeping both the Northern Lakes League boys and girls as the, the playoffs will begin next week. We'll have much more to talk about next week on the postseason. But this week now, we're going to talk about officiating. Obviously, that's been a major topic of discussion from the OHSAA's perspective. And I think, guys, when it comes to soccer, I think perhaps soccer is the most subjective of sports. So that means all the people in the stands think they know more than the ladies and gentlemen who actually are officiating it, which tends to have some more, we'll say, sideline officiating where it really doesn't have a place uh, i mean I, I give i give a lot of credit to the referees because it, it, it's a tough job i mean you, you always annoy you've always annoyed somebody someone's not going to be happy with a call um you know and, and it's and it's really hard i mean even at the top level now in, in the premier league they brought in var to, to, to help the referees out which which is an argument for and against that but you know it, it's, it's a thankless job you know that there is a shortage we noticed that in the club scene as well that there's a shortage of referees, uh, you know. And we, we just without referees, we don't have a game. And, and it's it's sad really that it's coming to this. But you know, let the referees do the job. Yeah, and I've got a shout out to the Red Aces, Lane United's uh, supporters group for the the, the referee T-shirts. These the eye chart, but it was all in jest and good fun. A gr great group out there in Eugene, Oregon. But that being said, I, I totally agree. Even today at my U10 game, we had the official. I heard him kind of mutter under his breath going, geez, grab a whistle if you want to. Uh, to some of the parents on a call, and I actually said, was that, was that my parents? Because I actually don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure whose parents were yelling at me. But, uh, but in the end, I thought he was one of the best referees I had all year. But, um, you know, U10, it's a little less pressure for me. I don't think I've yelled at an official all year this year as a U10 coach because what, what's the point anyways but we've had some really good ones um th this year and and we've had a lot that we'll just say are finding their way but you know what we need them uh we appreciate the ones you know what? the less you yell at them the more they can kind of put their stamp on the game and be more helpful to, to let these kids go on and then when they get good they can be a high school or college or professional official you never know you know a few weeks ago the ohsaa really had a big push about fan sportsmanship and i i don't think we've seen the effects of that push yet but it's certainly an initiative that is long overdue. Yeah, and I think it, it, it is. I mean, there's a, you, you listen to people in the stands, and, and it's a constant. It's, it can sometimes just be constant, and uh, I, the money they get paid isn't always worth it for them sometimes. So we, we've got to encourage referees. We've got to get younger kids involved in refereeing as well. You know, and I, and I think if, if they can put this initiative through and, and make it work, and, and if, if fans are causing trouble, if, if fans are berating the referee all the time, then action has to be taken at some point. And Chris, I know as a former coach, you've got a little bit of a unique take, and when there's a problem with a parent in the stands, you allow the child to be the messenger. <laughs> uh, sometimes, but yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, you've got, the question is, what age is that child? What are they doing? Yeah, you've got everything from, you know what, all right, hey, Timmy, go talk to grandma, because it's also grandparents sometimes, but no, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but, and it's sometimes your assistant coach. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, sometimes there's different ways you handle it. Is it the kid that goes, hey, hey mom, dad, come on. Um, or is it something that's going to be a sideline administrator, let the referee uh, do, do the officiating on the field. Um, but, you know, th there's different ways to do it. Um, but I think part of it is education uh, of, you know, step forward. Hey, this is what we're trying to accomplish right here. And sometimes they really don't even understand they're being that loud. So. Now, I've got super hearing. Uh, it's a curse as a coach because I'm hearing it. I'm sure referees wouldn't like to have super hearing either because they're kind of chirping at. Uh, but it is a little bit annoying that side. I would just say I've never heard a referee going, oh, man, those parents are really mean to me. I should give them the next call. 
<laughs> it doesn't happen that way. It goes the other way, if anything. Yeah, this problem is nothing new. It has been around for generations. It is getting to be more of an issue, and there is no easy solution. If there was an easy solution, we'd have already come to it. But I, I suppose talking about it, discussing it, educating is the first step in eradicating the issue. Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, for, for the high schools, for, for us as a club, we, we try and educate the, the, the parents and, and the players and the coaches as well. I mean, it's, it's all of us. We all have to be educated with it. And we all have to realise that, again, without the referees, there's no game. We have to give these younger kids a chance, these 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds a chance to come out and referee. You know, and, and if that's an assigner out there watching them referee and helping them along the way, brilliant. What we can't have is coaches, parents, players just constantly berating them. They're going to do one game, they're going to leave. And, and that's a referee who could be refereeing for years, just gone. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point, Danny. If, if you're riding an official at a, at a U10 game, that's where people are starting off. If they have a bad taste at U10, they're not going to stick around. We're not going to have better officials at the higher levels if we're running them out of the game at the earliest stages. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you think about the way you coach. You allow failure. Sometimes your kids have to fail to learn, too. So it's got to be the same way with the officials. I mean, there's a couple times today I kind of look at coach, my assistant coach, you think so? He's like, no. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, it is what it is. We'll let him keep going. And that was to a good official. But it was one official for a whole field. That's tough to do anyway. So, yes, we want the officials to get it right all the time, but they can't. It's one set of eyes for a whole field, and it's in the opinion of the referee. They may be trying to get a game to go to a certain way, and sometimes it just flat out doesn't work. It is what it is. What are some of the ways we can help get more officials in the game? I think it's, I think it's the, the courses. I know the, the assigners that they put on courses a lot. We, we, I know we ran a course last year at the club as well, and just try and encourage the, 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 the younger generation to come in and actually try refereeing. I think getting them in to do it is, is probably the easy part because mm -hmm. it's good pocket money for them. It's a bit of a Saturday and a Sunday job for them to, to collect some money. The hard part's keeping them, yeah. and, and that's coaches, parents, players as well. Um, I think it's, it's just going to, at some point, it may just have to come to that worst-case solution where... Games aren't played because there's no referees. And that and would be sad for the players, for the coaches, and everything else. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. A very interesting discussion. We didn't have time for all of it tonight, so make sure you go to the BCSN Now app. You can see this full discussion about the officiating situation and what we can do to improve it right here in Northwest Ohio.